Hello and welcome. Today's exciting episode is a sewing vlog. So just a bunch of little snippets from all the things I've been up to for the past few it's weeks. Perfect. 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 Perfect jacket. So I made this summer dress out of my African wax print, six yards of fabric. And then I was like, oh, I love this summer dress. I'm going to make loads more maxi dresses. So I got out all my fabrics, put them into little piles. Some of the, a lot of them are six yards, like three yards of one fabric, three yards of another. But some of them are also eight yards and, and or 10 or 12 yards so they're going to be really really full skirted maxi dresses so after I'd sorted them out then I made this one it is four yards of rose fabric and four yards of green and that turned out adorably as well so now it is time to make a couple more I think yeah because these dresses are awesome so after I'd sorted out all those piles and which dresses, which fabric cells going to turn into which dresses, I remembered this Zimmerman um, dress from a few years ago. And it's just sort of, it's a colour block dress. It's also got Rick Rack on it, but I'm not doing that. Then I carefully set aside, I'm going to do a Zimmerman dress video. You've probably seen it by now, but I haven't actually done it yet. And um, yeah, so I've got the colourful one and also a khaki one because I'll wear the, um, those greens and browns more. So and then once I'd done them, I had all these like for the Zimmerman ones, I only used like one strip of this, one strip of that. And then I had the rest of the big bit of fabric left. So I decided to redo my little um, piles of fabric of dresses I was going to make. And these ones here are bulkier because I've actually gone ahead and ripped them up into. So the bottom tier has is 12 yards around and then there's a two six yard um, tiers and then a three yard tier and then a one and a half. And, and then the top little roll is all the bits of fabric I'm going to piece together to make the bodice. So yeah, so we've got um, those two of the Zimmerman ones and then we've got four other ones over at the top. Um, the front ones, we've got the olive one. We've got on the left is the Monsters Inc. one. This one's olives with florals. This one is um, one of the first ones I did. It's just all different reds and pinks with a floral that has those tones in it too. And then I've got another historic print in teals and blues. And yeah, I only used one strip of teal and one strip of blue in that. So there's quite a bit of fabric left over for that. Bottom is the um, animal print one with lots of browns. I think that's going to be really pretty. And then I've got two black ones because next month is black and white month. So what I have to do now is I have to finish making the Zimmerman video, which means I actually have to finish making the dresses. So I have to move all these ones. So I just sort of document it first. So I, in case I drop anything and, and everything goes everywhere. So I'm going to put these away and get on with that Zimmerman video. For the Zimmerman video, I was going to make two. I've made the colorful one, but I have not even, and I, well, I've made the skirt of it and I've still got the bodice to go. But um, mm, looks like berries and chocolate. Um, I haven't even started the camouflage coloured one. This is the one that I'd wear more, whereas the other one's the fashionista colours. So, yeah, I can't decide whether to just finish this and have one dress for that episode or make the other one that I'd actually wear. I think I'll... Oh, I think I'll do both. It's so much work. Okay, I shall be back once I've done more. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I was right about the camouflage dress being the one that I would wear more. It is fabulous. I mean, I love them both. They don't look like shirt dresses. The original Zimmerman dress was a shirt dress and um, these do not look like that, but I'm so happy with the way that they turned out. I would absolutely wear both of them. To begin with, I wasn't entirely convinced that I would ever wear the fashionista coloured one. But yeah, anyway, now that they are done, it is time to use all the information I gathered making them and make something new. Which one shall I make? Should I do one of the black and white ones for black and white month? Or 
I mean, that one is cute, the one with the florals. And I like the screamy one too, with the Halloween fabric and the daisies. That is cute. But these ones, oh, this green one. Did I mention that green is my favorite color? One of the fabrics has cornflowers on it too. So it's sort of greens and blues. I love that combination. And um, this one I've had sort of torn into strips for a while now, but it's quite similar to the Fashionista one. So I think I'll put that off for a while. I think maybe the teal, the green, or one of the two black and white ones, perhaps. Yeah, really narrowing it down here. Basically, I don't want to do the Monster Zinc one yet because I think I'm going to do a Monster Zinc capsule wardrobe of, yeah, like one dress per character. Because I'm trying to do one month, one colour per month this year. And it's just not working out for me. I just like all colours. So I end up going, oh, but I'll make this as well. And I'll make this as well. And then when I go to do the collection video for the end of the month, I'm like, there's a billion different colours in here. There's no colour theme. So yeah, I thought maybe I'll do like capsule wardrobes. I don't know. Anyway, I am very happy with the way these two turned out. I have to go do the pattern um, recommendations for this um, color blocking dress video and then I will be back and I will finally have decided which dress I'm going to make this video. Well, doing the pattern recommendations, it ended up being like nine minute segment in the video. I did cut it down quite a bit, but yeah, it ended up being about nine, yeah minutes because I just ended up getting out so many different ones and different people have different skill levels and different strengths and weaknesses so I was like well if you're good at this maybe this one and if you're good at this maybe this one and um yeah because I personally if I, I was going to make a shirt dress with loads of different colors in it I would just get a shirt pattern crop it at the you know how they always have at the waistline they always have a um crop to fit if you're petite yeah I would just cut it off there well you know trace it and then cut it off there and have that cropped bit as the bodice and then just add layers at different lengths so yeah I ended up doing that oh and this if you saw my short of the fashionista color block dress I had this on the other mannequin just to have something on it and I don't know I just feel like it's very um Gucci London, you know, when Alessandro first took over as creative director of Gucci, he sort of went through that very um, up shop, glam, glam, uh, glam grandma phase. And yeah, I just thought the daisy dress and the amber vintage style Chanel jacket looked really Gucci London. If you, um, if you don't know, I'll get some pics and I love this tweed. I, in one video I said I thought it was from Spain, but I've got some other tweeds like that that were from Spain. That one is actually, I bought a few years later from um, Linton Tweeds in the UK. They hardly ever do those sort of tweeds anymore. So this is what I mean by Gucci London. The first few Alessandra um, for Gucci shows were shown in London and because the influence is there in particular, like this eclectic sort of sense of style. And that got me thinking about, yeah, I might do a video about, because um, a lot of people have asked for one about how you develop a sense of personal style. And I mean, every single person does it differently, but I've just, um, I've like Googled all the top articles and I'm just going to really briefly run through them and then talk about how I developed mine and how you could sort of lean into what you like about what you currently have and sort of go from there. And um, yeah, but I thought I might also do a an episode on um, how you can sort of revitalize what you already have in your wardrobe. Well, not revitalize, reboot. Like this is, um, if you bought a jacket like this, it would be an investment piece. You would never throw it out. Well, I personally wouldn't. It's really expensive, really, really high quality stuff. And But um, I always just wear it with jeans and a t-shirt and boots. So yeah, I just think uh, recently I've 
styling my videos, I've paired it with a skirt and um, a different dress and um, now this daisy dress. So yeah, there's lots of ways you could, like if you've got really key pieces that you're kind of a bit tired of, yeah, I think there are ways you could still utilise them that are just completely different. So yeah. I've decided I'm not going to do one of the summer dresses just yet. I'm going to do another one of the Vintage Vogue 1939 dress. But um, yeah, in this dress, it's got one front panel and one back panel. Well, it's got two, but I cut mine on the fold. So it ends up being one front panel, one back panel. But I'm going to add an extra panel. So it's going to have two front and one back, and um, but evenly spaced around. And I might use the rayon, maybe. I'm not really a fan of rayon, but I have bought them, so I have to use them up. Or I've got this cotton vintage floral print, and I've got three yards of each, because I just need a dress. The vintage ones, um, because, you know, the World War I, um, then the Depression, then World War Two. there was a shortage of fabric, and everyone was pretty skint anyway, um, poor. Anyway, so, yeah, the dresses from then are really simple. Just a sew a few seams, and you're done. So I think I'll just make one of those, and then maybe I'll have enough fortitude to make another summer dress because they just – you feel, I feel like I'm sewing for days when I do one of those – um, yeah, fabulous summer dresses. They are gorgeous and I totally want to get them all done, but I just think I need a little break first. So I did go ahead and cut out both of those dresses, but it occurred to me that they're good ones to film. People like seeing a vintage dress pattern being made up. So I cut them out and then I did a bit more prep on those style videos, collecting um, relevant photos and and that and then I went ahead and I sewed the skirt of this um black one so it's three fabrics with black base so there's one rayon is the floral one and then there's two Christmas clearance ones that don't look particularly Christmassy and I've just laid so I had three yards of each so it's a nine yard this dress is going to be made out of so it's very big and I've got 12 yards in the bottom three layers and then six yards in the second tier. And then I've got a tier that is just two bits across. And that's the, um, there's only three yards of that. And um, yeah, I don't like the rayon being the top of the skirt. So I'll add another one. But um, yeah, um, so these are metallic, the two um, cottons. They've got metallic gold and metallic silver. It, it kind of looks like white, I guess, but they're actually metallic silver and gold. Working with rayon in the bottom two tiers was fine. I think rayon is good when it's between two cottons. That I can work with, but not as the top of the tier. Yeah, so I did yet more prep for those style videos. Oh my gosh, so much work. And then I finished the bodice and I... Because I'd taken time off to do other, well, you know, life stuff, but as well as other video prep stuff, I um, got distracted. So the first two and a half tiers are right, correct. But then I got the wrong fabric for the top tier of the skirt. And because I did that one in the busy one, then, yeah, I got the order of all the fabrics wrong for the... Um, for the bodice and for the hood so I can't just pull it apart and redo it because I don't have any fabric left but I do love the hood oh my god I love it so much but yeah I got the orders wrong of the fabric I don't think it really matters and I it's just way too much effort to pull it apart patch you know piece everything together and then cut everything out again so I like the hood the way it is and the bodice, I don't think it looks good with the bottom of the bodice being the blackest of the three fabrics. I think that fabric panel would have looked good at the shoulders rather than at the stomach area. I do like the pleats being in the blackest one rather than the most metallic-y one, but um, yeah, I still like it. 
and I absolutely love this hood. I um, Because it's black anyway, I was always going to wear it more in the cooler months than in, you know, the peak of summer. So yeah, I thought if it has a hood, then I can always just wear long, a couple of long sleeve t-shirts underneath it and then a hoodie over it. But um, it's going to be a little bit brighter and more flower florally to have the, um, yeah, the hood with all the floral and the metallic prints on it. I think it's very cute. Anyway, working with this rayon, I mean, I guess I could just donate the rayon fabric I have, you know, because there are people who love working with rayon. I think I'll use up what I have and never buy any more. So yeah, hopefully I'm not just being stubborn about it. But um, I know you can use starch to um, alter it while you sew it, but that's not me. I don't have a problem with sewing silk or anything like that. I just, um, because I'm using it with cotton, it's, um, yeah, I've got a really old sewing machine and it's like, you should be using cotton with cotton. You should be using cotton with cotton. It's very stubborn sewing machine. So, um, that's the difficulty that I'm having. It's, um, a tension thing, I guess. And, um, yeah, so that's frustrating because the thread keeps breaking. I am using the correct needle. I know what my machine wants, but it just doesn't like using different fabrics. So, um, yeah, it is frustrating. It keeps anyway. So yeah, I think what I'll do the easiest way for me to use up the rayon fabrics that I have in the next lot of dresses is for me to, um, just use them in the bottom panels the like the really wide bottom tiers of the skirt and not in the bodice i think also like a maxi dress is actually quite heavy and you can see the pull of well not really but i mean i can see it if you really know what you're looking for you can sort of see the pull of the weight on the rayon strip that's in the bodice you can see the weight of carrying that full skirt and I'm not going to be able to hang it on a coat hanger I'm going to have to put it in a storage box just because it it will just age too quickly so yeah not a fan of rayon in general and I mean I'm always going to prefer natural fabrics that aren't very toxic during the manufacturing process <laughs> okay we're literally looking at a cotton with metallic um paint oh, sprayed on it but you know what I mean so yeah oh, I love this hood so so much I love it so much there are definitely going to be more dresses but because this one's black it's kind of and it's got florals on it I'm, I started calling it my girly Darth Vader dress so yeah and there's loads of mess, so maybe I'll just summon some stormtroopers to clean it all up. Anyway, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do with the other dresses. This one is flax, rayon, and cotton. And um, this one's a rayon, I think, flax, cotton blend, something like this, whereas this one's just rayon. So I think, um, yeah, I was going to make a separate dress with that and then use the like one yard left to make a dress with the cotton now I'm thinking um maybe I'll just make one dress so, so I think the pink one is four yards and the white with florals is three yards so maybe I'll just make a one maxi dress and just use the floral rayon for the bottom bit this one the daisy one is the rayon so again, I think I'll just use the rayon um, to make two very large bottom tiers in the skirt, but I won't use it in the top of the skirt or in the bodice. And um, oh, I love how I use the pansy belt on this one. I've got like, I'll just use a black belt probably in future. But um, yeah, so I think I'll still do all these maxi dresses, but I just won't use rayon in the bodice just because of the incredible amount of weight of a full skirt. I don't like that. You can see the weight. I like it when really heavy things look weightless. Oh, and these are still out because I'm still going to do my pattern comery. And while we're going through my list of things to do, I still haven't hand sewed the cuffs of these dresses. These are the April dresses. And I didn't even get to any of the beading. Oh, 
Beading is like my favorite thing. I really only sew so that, you know, I make a jacket which I can then bead. And these two, they're definitely not going back in their storage boxes. They're staying there until I've made them into jackets because those tweeds are just magnificent. I really want to wear them. The time I'm filming this, you haven't seen the rainbow dress video yet. But oh my gosh, it's so Valentino from the 1970s. I love it so much. The puffy sleeves are adorable. But again, I still have to hand sew the cuffs, the seams to, in the cuffs. Oh, so much work. Oh, that's a rayon dress. The The two green ones are rayons. I should have... Oh, I, I'm just looking at how many orange dresses I made in April. I don't think I've ever had so many orange dresses in my wardrobe like ever. My favourite of them is definitely the orange box um, African wax print that sort of the print on it reminds me of, you know, boxes of a vintage box of orange, if you know what I mean. So beautiful. But yeah, these ones are rayon and I didn't have any trouble sewing them. I think my machine just gets fussy when it does a mix between um co cotton and rayon in the same piece like it just can't yeah it needs a constant level of tension if you get what I mean it's um yeah I understand it's <laughs> it's fussiness I totally get why it needs that but I think I'll do all these dresses and I think yeah I think with the bottom wider tears it's much easier to incorporate rayon with the cotton then so I think that's what I'll do moving forward and it's like I love those eastern european skirts you know with the big full skirts and that's kind of the way they end up looking so I think I'll do that anyway I have to go clean up some of this mess and make some more videos I think I'll do the maybe the pattern comrie one next cuz I just really need to get those patterns in some sort of order and then I'll have to do all that hand sewing god there's so many little chores I think I'll write a list and then you know just ignore everything <laughs> go have a coffee and a lovely piece of cake or something yes I definitely think I need some a donut or maybe a slice of chocolate cake with lots of cream Okay, I'm going to go do that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you were inspired to um, finish some of your unfinished projects. Because, yeah, like I'm supposed to be doing. But, um, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. And I'm going to go do stuff. Ooh, I can wear my girly Darth Vader dress. Yeah, I'm sure I'll look as menacing as Kermit the Frog when he wears a black hood. I do like it in Maleficent where Ju uh, Angelina Jolie um, is looking all menacing in her big black um, outfit and um, her child plays the child in the movie and she's just like, ooh. I think that's really cute. Okay, I'm really going to go now and read yet more articles on how to develop your own sense of style. Honestly, some of these things are so generic. It's ridiculous. Anyway, happy sewing. Bye.